Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for your weekly wrap up and this is actually our annual roundup of the best stuff that I reviewed this year. Every December we do this and although this video is getting published on November 30th, it's pretty much where I usually do this video every year. We got a lot of cool stuff to check out so let's get to it. Now the criteria for picking a product of the year here is pretty simple. It just has to be something we reviewed here on the channel since the last time we did this video, which was December of 2019. It either has to be something new and novel and groundbreaking or something that adds a lot of value to the marketplace or both. And we've got a couple of things in this list that actually do meet uh, both of those criteria. And it really comes down to my opinion. And you might disagree if there's something I looked at that I missed. Let me know down in the comment thread and maybe we'll do an honorable mention video a little bit later. So without further ado, let's get to the first category. Now our first category for this year's best of are computers, of course. We look at a lot of computers here on the channel, especially laptops, but this one really stands out. It is a MacBook Air. It looks exactly like last year's MacBook Air, but the difference is what's inside. This, of course, has the new Apple M1 processor. And this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. This is a real novel thing. Even though it looks the same from the outside, the chip is enormously powerful. Uh, even for little stuff, like when you're pulling up your uh, menus and windows and stuff, everything just responds quicker. And we did a bunch of benchmarks on this in my full review. And it really was something that I think is going to change the industry because you're able to get so much more power per watt out of these new efficient Apple processors that it's going to, without question, drive the industry in a new direction. And this is only the first version of it. So I am really eager to see uh, what this does to personal computing. And if you are looking for a very efficient, very cool fanless laptop that does some amazing stuff for its amount of uh, heat consum power consumption, uh, this is definitely worth taking a look at. The MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, or the Mac Mini. Uh, with the M1 chip, and you can see my full review linked down below in the master playlist. But that's not the only thing that interested me this year, because we also took a look at this little guy. It looks like a keyboard, right? It's just a uh, computer keyboard, but no, it actually is a lot more than that. This is a Raspberry Pi, uh, the Pi 400, and what it incorporates is the entire Raspberry Pi package into a keyboard here, and you get all of your ports here on the back. And it's pretty much the same thing as what you would expect out of one of these Raspberry Pi circuit boards, but it's all in one. And you just boot it up and you are ready to go out of the box. And I bought mine as a kit. And in that kit, I got this great book uh, called the Raspberry Pi Beginner's Guide. And you can, of course, buy this separately. And what's great about this book is that it takes you from the very beginning, basically just getting the computer installed and set up all the way to programming it. And it's a really good way to get started with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so even if you have a Pi already and don't think you need the Pi 400, uh, maybe the book here might be worth taking a look at because it really is a great starting guide, especially if you want to get into coding. It starts with the real basics here, like uh, snap or scratch, and then it kind of works its way up from there. So great book, definitely worth taking a look at. Now, we were also very impressed this year with the gains that AMD has made with their 4000 series processors. And the best of the bunch was the Lenovo Flex 5. Uh, we like this one with its 4500U processor because it was a two-in-one. It had 16 gigs of RAM on board not very expensive, and they even threw a pen into the mix as well. A really nice, well-rounded laptop that really hit the value uh, proposition for me there. Uh, the pen worked great. There was really no complaints on this thing. And one of the nice things about these new AMD chips is that they are much more power efficient than their prior generation processors. Not as power efficient as the new Apple processors, of course, but certainly competitive for affordable PCs. And they also play games pretty well. We were playing No Man's Sky and a bunch of other games in our full review and typically seeing about 30 to 40 frames per second at 1080p with many popular games. It's not gonna rival an expensive gaming laptop, but you can play games on them. And that's something that you couldn't always do at this price point just a year ago. Now, one honorable mention here is the Acer Swift 3. Uh, this is powered by an eight core AMD CPU, a 4700U. 
really good performance for its price and form factor and it's something definitely worth checking out if you want something a little bit smaller than that Lenovo or you just need a laptop and not a two-in-one. Uh, one thing to note on all of these affordable AMD machines is that they typically have an Intel version as well. And the Intel machines do well at most things, but not games and graphics. So you'll definitely want to make sure you get the AMD version when you're out shopping. And there's a lot of good choices out there powered by those new AMD chips, but these two were my favorite. All right, let's move on now to gaming. And our first item on the best of for gaming is, of course, the Oculus Quest 2. Now, last year... The Oculus Quest 1 made the list, uh, but the new one here is better. It's got higher resolution, first of all. It can run at a higher frame rate. This will go up to 90 hertz now. And it's lighter weight. It's more comfortable. It just feels like a revised product. And, of course, it has a slightly more powerful processor. Uh, these are available for the most part, so you might be able to pick one of these up easier than you could a PS5 or an Xbox uh, Series X at the moment. And it really is a nice improvement. And what's great about the Oculus Quest platform is that it's standalone. So you don't need a computer to play these VR games. And they're actually really good for a standalone device powered by a mobile processor. The battery life isn't great. You get maybe two and a half, two hours out of it, depending on the game. Uh, but by the time you get that far, your eyes are ready for a rest anyhow. So you can plug it into the USB-C and charge it up. The other cool thing about this is that it works with PCs. So if you have a gaming PC, you can hook it up with the USB cable, and this suddenly becomes a PC VR headset. You'll need to get a longer USB-C cable to do that, but it really works well, and that opens up a whole new library of games that are more immersive. So Star Wars Squadrons and Half-Life Alex, all that stuff works on here. It works with Steam VR along with some of the Oculus titles. Uh, there are a number of Oculus titles that are cross buy so if you buy it for the oculus headset here it will also be available on the pc side with better graphics so it's a really good product and uh, really nicely improved for this year and i think this is going to slowly nudge people into vr gaming it's definitely something you'll want to check out and the cool thing is they just activated the 90 hertz support for the PC link function too. Now, another gaming item we looked at this year that I really liked was something called the AT Games Ultimate Legends Arcade Cabinet. Uh, this is what it looked like from our video that we did a little bit earlier this year. And what's cool about this is that it's almost a full-size arcade cabinet. It's got a bunch of games that are baked in. Some real popular games from the 80s and 90s are on board. They try to sell you some new and different games as well if you want to go down that route but they also were very welcoming to people doing modifications of it or folks that just want to plug stuff in. And I was able to plug in my Raspberry Pi, for example. I plugged in my Mister, and I was able to get those games working on the cabinet. It's got great controls, just a neat product that really feels nicely constructed and solid. And if you don't have enough room for all of those uh, little arcade cabinets that you'll see uh, at retailers and on Amazon, uh, this is a nice all-in-one unit that can give you everything in one package. And that is the AT Games Legends Ultimate. And I was really surprised that AT Games really put out such a high-quality product because they haven't always been known for the best quality stuff out there. Uh, this one is definitely the exception. And in full disclosure, the folks from AT Games did send us that arcade cabinet free of charge. All right, let's move on now to networking. And of course, the big news for me this year was getting my new direct fiber to the home internet connection, which has dramatically changed my workflow. And that connection is Gigabit Pro from Comcast, which essentially gives me a symmetrical two gigabit connection back and forth to the internet. And one of the challenges that I ran into with this new connection is that my home network was only running at a gigabit. So I had to do some upgrades here to get everything working. And one of the things that I discovered was that multi-gigabit networking gear was very expensive. And there are now some affordable alternatives out there that give you the speed without breaking the bank. And one of the best products that I can recommend at the moment uh, is this two and a half gigabit switch from QNAP. Now you do need to get new network adapters that can run at two and a half gigabit speeds, but there are a number of affordable USB adapters out there now, as well as internal cards that can run at that speed. And this is a switch that I use in my kitchen right now to connect up to my network at full speed. And full disclosure, QNAP sent us this switch free of charge, but it's been working great and it's something that I can recommend. And I think it's only about a hundred bucks too, very affordable. Now upstairs in my gaming room, I bought another QNAP device that is pretty affordable for what it is. 
Uh, this is a 10 gig switch. So it's got four 10 gig connections and you can hook up an SFP adapter or just go in with a, a standard RJ45 network cable. And I have this running 10 gigs from the basement here up to my game room. And then I've got my gaming machine and a few other things plugged in at full speed. And then there's a bank of eight ports there on the left that all run at gigabit speed. And I have all my game consoles and stuff plugged into that. Uh, this switch is again, affordable. I think it's about 300 bucks. And it really allowed me to get that network speed out to all the parts of my house that needed it. And real kudos to QNAP, which at the moment really feels like the only company that's serious about providing an affordable uh, multi-gigabit connection for consumers right now. And as our internet speeds begin to increase with all these new fiber optic options, this kind of stuff is going to be more important. And these two products really solved a lot of problems for me. Now, another product that I'm going to add into the network category this year is the UDM Pro from Unify. This is the router that's driving everything in my house at the moment, and it really nicely integrates with other Unify products. They're kind of an enterprise level, kind of a small office kind of product, and you can bring a lot of that power and functionality home. And what's nice about their Dream Machine routers is that they integrate uh, their Unify controller, they integrate the router and a few other Unify features into a single product. And what's nice about the Pro device that I have is that it also works as a DVR for their security cameras, and it has enough horsepower to drive the connection that I have now here at the house. So it's been a great addition to the network here, and that's been working out great. And in full disclosure, Unify did send us the UDM Pro free of charge to review here on the channel. They also have a lower end unit called just the Unify Dream Machine that might work better for more traditional cable modem connections. So let's move on to smartphones now. We're going to go with a value pick, which is the Google Pixel 4a. Uh, this is kind of a low to mid-range phone that is really nicely equipped. It's got a great camera on the back, really good camera, fingerprint reader, just a nice form factor, and a beautiful OLED display. It performs really nicely here. There is a 5G version of it that I think might be a little bit larger than this one, but this one is 4G only, and I think for most people will be good enough. It works across all carriers here in the US and is very affordably priced and completely unlocked. And if you're looking for a decent smartphone that won't break the bank, uh, this one is definitely one to take a look at. And of course, it is running with stock Android. Uh, Google does a nice job in making their operating system run really nicely on their hardware. And this is definitely a phone that I would recommend to people. And I've enjoyed using it quite a bit. And you'll probably see this pop up a bit here on the channel when we have Android stuff to take a look at. And in full disclosure, Google sent us the Pixel 4a phone free of charge a few weeks ago for a review. If you are in the iOS ecosystem, the iPhone ecosystem, the iPhone SE, Costs a little bit more than this does, but offers the same value proposition. Great performance, great camera, great screen, and something that I think would be a good equivalent on the iPhone side if you are uh, looking for a phone that doesn't cost all that much money. So let's move on now to video production. And without question, the big game changer this year was the Blackmagic ATEM Mini line of products. Now these are video switchers. And back in the old days, something like this would cost you tens of thousands of dollars. Now you can get in the door for under 300 bucks. And what it does is it takes four cameras or computers or game consoles in over HDMI, and it allows you to switch between those devices. You also have the option to do some rudimentary picture in picture. It can do green screen. It can do all of this just on the device. I have the pro edition here that also will uh, allow you to record and or stream out live without the need for a computer at all. And what's neat about this is that it will output the production over HDMI, or you can plug it into a computer and have it work as a webcam. And you can see uh, just a little fun thing I did in one of my reviews of this as to how it works. So you have some cool dissolves you can do, or you can do these hard cuts between devices. And you also saw there that we were able to bring in a game console and then switch that content in with other stuff as well. And just the price point alone on this makes it really attractive. And I'm finding a lot of usefulness for this and a whole bunch of different things that I've been doing uh, throughout the course of this pandemic. It's just nice to have a capture device like this that can also uh, act as a switcher. 
and it works with all of the Blackmagic software for their more expensive production switchers as well. So it's a really versatile product and a real game changer. It doesn't do anything different than their other video switchers do, but it does the same things that their more expensive switches do for a very affordable price. And that's the big story about this product and why you really had a hard time getting one uh, earlier this year. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is a drone that I got in in December, right after we did our last product of the year video. This is the DJI Mavic Mini, and in full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. Now, this has already been replaced by the Mini 2 from DJI. They tend to replace their products every year, so just be prepared for that. Uh, these are really lightweight. They're 249 grams with the battery, which means they're just under the weight that is a requirement for FAA registration. So you can uh, really get into this without a lot of red tape. And it's been a lot of fun to fly. The new one has a 4K camera on board. I got the Fly More combo that came with a bunch of extra propellers, which I think you'll need. I've already had to replace two propellers on this one, even without crashing it. Uh, you get the remote control here that folds out. And then you've got a bank of batteries too that come with it. And that really is helpful. This thing will stay up in the air for almost a half an hour on a single battery. So you can imagine just how much flight time you get out of this. Now it doesn't have all the advanced features that uh, they're more advanced and more expensive drones have. But if you're looking to get into drone photography, uh, this is gonna do a lot and it is super stable in the air. Again, this is the uh, old version of it. The new one's probably a little bit better. Uh, this is when I went down to Florida last year, and look how stable it is in flight. It's in the air getting knocked around by the wind a little bit, and it's just rock solid. It's got a great gimbal on it, of course, as all of these DJI drones have, and it's just a great platform to start messing around with drone photography. The only thing I would caution you about with this is just making sure you don't fly it in heavy wind. It is really lightweight, and as such, it can get picked up by the wind and taken away sometimes. So just keep it uh, you know, reasonable on the winds before you take off. You'll often get warnings while you're flying if the wind is too much for it. Uh, but beyond that, I think it's a great starting point for a drone, and these DJI drones are really easy to fly. Now this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you and I want to first thank our super chatters who were participating on some of our live streams this week. They include Evan, Evan Yun, Vinny T, Jan Willem Van Barneveld and Pangaj Kumar. So I want to thank you all for your support during our live streams and I also want to thank some new supporters we have here on the channel. We have four new YouTube members, LJ030, Jeremy Hop, I Lee, Foghorn1213 and Hubert Bannis. I want to thank you all for your contributions to the channel and your support. I also want to thank everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on a regular basis too because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly contribution to the channel like those folks did. Or you can do a one-time one contribution too if you want. We also have the YouTube membership program with that join button right down below. And if you do that, You'll get some cool badges next to your name whenever you chat or leave a comment. We're also now on Floatplane, which is the Linus Tech Tips platform. You can find me at lon.tv slash floatplane, and all of our videos go up over there as well. We've got a bunch of you supporting the channel there too, so lots of great ways to support the channel. So this week on the channel, we had a couple of live streams. Two of them were done on Amazon. Uh, this one was done on YouTube, the uh, pluggable USB-C dock that we reviewed, trying to get everything figured out with that. So you can check that out in our live stream playlist or go to my Amazon page. We didn't do anything on the extras channel this week, but I do have a bunch of odds and ends to shoot. So we'll probably have a live stream with that in a couple of days. And then on the main channel, we had four videos. One was a quick one, uh, just going over some Black Friday deals that they had on Plex Pass and the HD Home Run Prime. The Prime is back, but it's the three tuner version. I think the sale is still going on if you're watching this now on Cyber Monday, uh, but definitely uh, check it out. You can get the three tuner Prime for $149 with a coupon. They made another run of them. Uh, no six tuner though, just the three tuner, and you can get more on that video. Uh, link down below in the description. We also reviewed the Surface Laptop Go from Microsoft. I like it actually as a low cost portable Windows laptop, nicely built. We looked at that pluggable dock that had a lot of interest from a lot of you because it's Thunderbolt and USB-C and it delivers 96 watts of power on top of that. Very flexible dock, probably one of the nicer ones I've seen here on the channel. 
And then, of course, we had our monthly sponsored video from Plex where we looked at the performance of a Plex server running on the new Apple M1 processor, and it really surprised me by how well it did. And you can check out that video, again, linked down below in the master playlist. So this week on the channel, I've got a bunch of things on the docket. Uh, the first is a review that I already shot that I have to tweak a little bit on this new 15-inch uh, laptop from Lenovo running with the Tiger Lake processor. We'll be looking at that closer very soon. I'm hoping to get to my Roku Ultra review in relation to the new AirPlay 2 features of the Roku line. That's on the horizon as well. We also got in a new 14-inch uh, laptop from HP that is also running with one of those new Intel Tiger Lake chips. So we'll have a bunch of laptops this week too. And if you want to be notified every time we do anything on the channel, you can click the bell to get those notifications delivered to you. We also have other channels you can find me on, including my Amazon page, where I hope you might uh, follow me. We're trying to build up the follower base over there. And there, a lot of our product review videos go up. And of course, I live stream there uh, at the same time I'm live streaming on YouTube. And sometimes I do streams only uh, on Amazon. So definitely check that out. We're also now on Anchor for our podcast. So if you are following the show in audio format, we're going to be better about uploading these again. So check it out. Anchor has been a really good platform to work with, and I'm looking forward to expanding my audio horizons as well. And of course, you can subscribe to our email list to get notified whenever we do something special. We've got the Facebook group, which is doing really well. We're well over a thousand members now. Great way to interact with me and other viewers. And we have my store where I sell previously used items and I sold a bunch of them this week. I've got more coming. Uh, so definitely check out the store. There's only one of everything because these are the actual items that I reviewed. Uh, these are the things that I purchased and I'm getting rid of so I can get back some of that money. And if you want to be notified whenever I put something up on the store, you can go to lon.tv slash store alert to get an email whenever we do add something to the store. And that is going to do it for now. Until next time, thank you all for watching. Thanks for your support. And I hope you all have a great December. And we'll be back with a lot more cool tech content very shortly. And again, make sure to follow me on Amazon and click the bell because we're always popping on in the middle of the day with really fun live streams. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.